So just because you write a website and you can see it in one browser and it looks great and it works, doesn't mean it's going to work on every browser. There are differences between the browsers on what is working and what does not work. In other words, what levels of standards have they added to their browser, their browser environment, and what standards uh, have not been added. For instance, Chrome, which seems to be more on the cutting edge of adding new technology to their browsers, will allow the use of different versions of ECMAScript. ECMA is E-C-M-A. And that just says this is the latest language of JavaScript or other scripting that might be supported by the browser. So it's very important to make sure that when you write your code, you confirm what can and cannot be used. For example, here's some HTML code. This is just a, a file called ArrayObjects.HTML. If you want, you can go create that file and type in this HTML. And if you do type in this HTML, make sure, let me get the screen set there, make sure that you also are accounting for uh, the closing body tag and closing HTML tag and the script tag, because you might not be able to see that on your screen there. So in this HTML file, we just have a button that says if you click on it, we're going to go to that event handler or that function. We have a field set with a legend for student info that gets the first name and the last name of the GPA and a button that says add to student. So that if you click on that, we call the method add student. And we have another field set. And in that field set, the caption is course info. And it allows you to get a course number and a course grade and a button that says add course. And if you click on that, you go to the add course event handler. And then we also have a P tag with the ID of output, because we're going to dynamically write information to that P tag. And then in our script statement, this is where we're going to see a different version of ECMAScript compared to what uh, Chrome can use and Firefox and Safari. So when I was using Chrome, I had a class that looked like this. And I declared the attributes in this class. We'll just say that I had an attribute called high. And so in Chrome, you just go and list your class attributes in the class. And that works great. However, in Firefox and Safari, it does not recognize this version of uh, JavaScript that you can declare your attributes in the class just outside of any other method. You just create the class and do the attributes. For Firefox, you actually have to have a constructor and then you create your attributes inside of that constructor by using the this.firstName, this.lastName. You also have to initialize your variables. The other thing that's interesting about the Firefox Safari version versus Chrome is that right here, if I have a whole other method that's not part of the constructor, and I say this.high, if that attribute has never been created before, this will now add the attribute to the class. But be aware it does not hoist it up. It doesn't say just because it's in that method it automatically exists. When I first run the object, and I, or I create the object, only these two attributes will exist until you call method stuff. Then that attribute gets existed. Uh, gets created. And I'll show you that in the debugger in just a moment. When you do inheritance for Chrome and Firefox, you have to make a call to super. You just have to. And the first thing you do in your constructor is you call super, and then you go ahead and do whatever else you want. For instance, in this class, student, we said if we ever create a student object, we call the parent constructor, which creates these two attributes. And then we create two new attributes. Notice we don't list them outside of the constructor, just in the class. We don't, we don't do like we usually do, which I love this, and this is the future. 
this is what we will be doing someday where we don't use the keyword this though you just say GPA and grades that is the future but not all browsers support it yet uh, when you learn new languages like C sharp though this is good for you to learn so the moral of or the the moral of this is that you just create your attributes in the constructor that's where you list them that's where you define them and then always make sure you call super and make sure you initialize your attributes when you create them so how does this work let's go ahead and uh, go live on this and I want to make sure that I am using Firefox so I'm gonna close out of that one let's minimize that and let's set up go live to work with Firefox rather than Chrome so in your Visual Studio Code Editor press control shift P as in Paul as in print and we want to click on preferences open user settings so if you just type open user you'll see which one you want to work with click on that click on extensions and click on live server config as you look at the options in the live server config you'll see that we're gonna find one called settings custom browser click on that currently mine is Chrome let's click Firefox and after it chooses Firefox we can go ahead and close the settings window actually I'm gonna leave mine open because I'm gonna switch back to Chrome let's go back to the array of objects program that we're working with and go live now it opens Firefox and I want to go ahead and inspect in Firefox so how do we get to inspect in Firefox we know that in Chrome it's control shift I so in Firefox right mouse click choose inspect element we can now see our code down here and let's go ahead and come to the console first of all we're gonna create a name go ahead and type in a first name and a last name sorry I'm typing in buck and wheat and I spelled weed incorrectly doesn't matter but it bothers me GPA 3.4 let's click add student so if I come to the console now I can type in that variable name and let me pull this down a little bit so you can see it right here on those double arrows the gamut you'll type in AO students which is the name of our global variable we created in the JavaScript let me show you that real fast right here we created a global variable called AO students and we said it was an empty array so if I type that in it says uh, AO students is not defined but of course I typed that incorrectly make sure that the case matters sorry about that AO students and it says it's an object well let's type it again AO students bracket zero bracket because we just added an array and it says I'm an object and look at the curly braces it almost makes it feel like it's an array of values and it is and the first values position or key is called first name with the value of buck the second is last name that's the key with the value of wheat GPA's key has a value of 3.4 and the grades key has an array of zero elements so let's come down here and type in course number one and a add course so now we added a grades object to that array come back down to here notice it says the grades now has one element inside of it let's go look at that one AO student dot grades says I'm an object AO students grades zero says I'm an object but I have an attribute called course num with the value of one and letter grade with the value of a 
So currently, we see what attributes we have. Now, where did we get these attributes? We got those attributes because of the parent class in the constructor and the child class in the constructor. So in Firefox and Safari, you just create your attributes more or less on the fly. You don't have to define them, really. But if you just type them in, that creates the attribute. We don't say var, and we don't create them outside the constructor. That's the difference between Chrome and Firefox Safari. Chrome says we can go ahead and create them outside the constructor. Firefox Safari says we create them in the constructor. Someday, Firefox and Safari will catch up with the rest, and we'll be able to create them outside of the constructor. Let's come back over to the browser again. And if you notice, the attribute hide does not exist. Right here in our code, we said we want to add an attribute called high and assign Greg to it. We've never called that method. If hoisting worked the same way in classes that it does in variables, it would look through here and say, oh, look, there's an attribute we're going to use someday. Let's go ahead and create that now and hoist it up so that you have access to it. But if you take a look back here, it is not a valid attribute yet. If I called that method, AO students, bracket, zero bracket, remember that gets you to the object, dot stuff, parenthesis, parenthesis, semicolon. Now I ran that method. Let's go take a look at that object again. AO students, bracket, zero bracket, it now has an attribute called high. So be aware that as you run uh, this type of code in Safari and um, Firefox, you're more or less creating attributes just on the fly. And that's the difference between your Chrome and Firefox and Safari when it comes to working with classes.